Yo, what is good, ladies and gentlemen? I, you see right here, C Reacts already got us another exclusive gameplay video. But leave a like and subscribe if you're new. I'm gonna be taking you guys through everything that was dropped yesterday. There was there was so much Sparking Zero content. It was so hard to keep up. It was so hard. But I I have a few bookmarks to show you guys, show you all the footage, show you all the clips, show you all the information. This is a detailed run through of everything we got from yesterday's. Uh, I don't even know what you call it, shebang. As you can see here, there's a like lot of clips that I bookmarked and post. So when I go through these clips again, as you guys uh, shout out to these creators and stuff that got, went and captured these posts for us. So the first post we have, obviously, is the game mode showcase where Dragon Ball's games officially posted this. And this had everybody hype because we was like, whoa, whoa, another gameplay hey, showcase. 12. You know, we thought it would be, we honestly thought would, I, I honestly thought that would it be just like, uh, another character trailer of some sort but no these cats actually these cats <laughs> man i can't i can't tell you how excited i am to play this y'all i cannot tell you how excited i am to play this. I'm, I'm super excited to play this but yeah so they dropped this and this was this right here man <laughs> oh boy Oh, man, they they, they explained all of the story aspects. They explained all of the character customization, the custom battles, the custom stories, the way that we can edit our own scenes, all that type of stuff. If you haven't seen the gameplay showcase, check out my reaction to it. I did it on my last video. Make sure you guys go check that out. In this clip, we have Mr. Uh, Nano, right? In this clip, we have Diffusion. All right, check it out. Oh, it's it's in, increased the quality. Yeah, let's run that back. Let's run that back. So this is the fusions. And the first time seeing this, I just love how it's in-game. I really enjoy that in-game aspect. That they added here. Now with this next clip, obviously it's just a funny little yeah, back clip. Shots, we do love those. <laughs> yeah, That's back uh, shots, Brian we do love those. I think it's Afro or whatever. Then we have two pictures of the Sword of Hope. Look at the slash that you get, bro. Look at this crap! The detail that is going into this game is immense. It's crazy, man. Bro, this is crazy. The, the slash going straight through him just like the anime. Like, they're emphasizing the thing about the anime. Like, they really want you to feel like you're fighting an anime. We have class grabs, guys. Class grabs are in the game. Not only do we have beam class grabs, we have both the double tap and the circle one. Um, so you guys that in a second. We have class. We have class grabs or grab clashes, whatever you want to call them. That is amazing. They're thinking of everything. Like when people, when the anime, when they clash together, that is so cool. Cool. That is not just an animation they're putting there. And it's that like Kubaria. Yeah, same thing. I repost. I reposted the same thing again with the character customization, y'all. This has just got to be the most innovative thing to add in Dragon Ball, aside from the cacks, bro. This is just peak right here. You can create our own 3D angles, 3D camera angles as a cinematographer. That's gonna be crazy good to use uh, animators all types of people who are actually aspiring to be like animators and stuff like you can like create stuff and post this online we could all enjoy it. the fights and the battles of different scenarios man that's gonna be so wicked this shot of Majin Vegeta right here oh my he says farewell trunks and even you Kakarot like come on man Kakarot did it good too the game Kakarot they did it good but man I want to see how they translate that whole scene Split screen is confirmed to be in the game, guys. We have split screen in the, and Goku Black is also confirmed. We also have some moves that we can be aware of here. Finish Sign, Wild Sense, Black Power Ball, Black Bind, God Bind, Shenron Aura, God Kamehameha, God Impact. I believe God Bind and Shenron Aura is like something that he did uh, in the movies or whatever. You can correct me if I'm wrong. We have split screen confirmed. This right here was a highlight clip, right, man? This was a highlight clip right here. Dude, look at the destruction. Look at that, bro. Look at how the map just changes. Dog, that is that is sick. That is sick. You can't tell me that's that sick. All right, next clip. So we have uh, Gogeta's uh, meteor explosion. Uh, media, yeah, media explosion. Freeza was far away. I wasn't gonna land ultimate uh, Kamehameha, so I just wanted to land something against him. So I throw that out. It wipes out Freeza. That's guys, crazy. We'll see later on. Look at that. So anyway. Look at the animation. Out, uh, the way he flies. The camera. Look. Look at the camera angles as the way he flies. In. 
It's like the actual movie. It's like you're watching an actual movie, like an actual movie scene or an anime scene. Like that is crazy how much detail they put into this. We have I'm no pushover limits. I break them. What? These these moves are kind of interesting. God Final Flash and Gamma Burst Flash. Yeah, these are supposed to be some crazy moves. The stands actually run out of. There's an actual clip of this that Burko posted. But the stands actually run out when you do a big launch or launch a big super uh, super attack. The, the, the fans actually run out of the stands. It's actually really cool and funny as heck, bro, to see. Uh, I think this is the clip right here. This is the clip right here. But something really cool that happened. They thought about Tien everything, does a super, bro. The announcer gets scared. Everyone evacuates the stage, and the stands become empty. This is more than just a cutscene, by the way, because now the stage is much bigger than before. You may notice here that we're fighting completely Look, outside the arena now. Like now we can go outside of the bro. They thought of every single thing. I do have a question on this because I did ask this yesterday, and I asked this on my Twitter, and it's right here. I asked them. Um, so this is a uh, question time. I asked my uh, actual Twitter. Um, uh, in the Sparking Zero community, uh, also ran by Makai Saiyan. Shout out to him. Make sure you guys go check out the community on Twitter. Uh, okay, question time. Do you like the character selection change or no? And why? Uh, me personally, just going to give my personal thoughts. I like it. I like that this is a good template. They said this is not the final product. So I like this template. And if you look at uh, some of the videos and stuff, the transitions between them, I'll show you that guys that in a second. It's just crazy crisp. But for me, the character selection is simplistic. There's simplicity. I do get the gripe about all the forms being like this. I don't think this is going to be the way it is. They might have just wanted to put them in there for the demo. But if that's the case, then, you know, I don't know. There's some room for improvement, definitely. But here are some of the, here are some of the thoughts. So, yeah, one of them said, um, I think this is not final. Um, this guy said, there is literally no love behind it. You could replace those characters with One Piece characters. And no one would know that this layout is supposed to be Dragon Ball's uh, Sparky Zero. Worst fighter select screen I have seen since 2009. <laughs> I feel like you was being a little extreme, but obviously my point was, you know, you know, you know, I, I think the simplicity kills nowadays, um, and it's not the final, so it's a template. Um, yes, because it's simple. So you agree with me? Me personally, not really was hoping a, not really was hoping a uh, more Tenkaichi 3 esque kind of screen with the real time models. Likely this is ain't the final build, yeah, which is not. But I do get that sentiment. No, it just seems off to me, but according to Nano, it's not the final cut. I don't want to scroll through 164 characters, not gonna lie. Other than that, it's straight. I get the sentence behind it. It, it, it doesn't seem like anybody hates it. They're just like, okay, it's gonna be a little tedious to get through, and I don't think I like that part. But as far as like the transitions and everything, uh, which again, I'm about to show you guys in a second. Right here, the transitions between characters just look so fluid. So if we go here, it looks so good. So good. To me, that looks great. And again, you see my poster. This is character selection screen. It's a nice, innovative, innovative way to introduce simplicity into a game that seems jam-packed. It does. It seems like a, there's a lot of elements and a lot of things into the game. And I feel like this is one of the things they just... They don't need to try too hard to. They don't need for it to be like Tenkaichi 3. Tenkaichi 3 is a little bit complex, in my opinion, how the, all the characters are lined up. It's simplistic in a way because you can kind of get to your forms better. But in this, I feel like it's way more simplistic maybe too simplistic but i feel like it kills again because you just gotta get to see the individual pop up on the screen that's just my opinion though uh here we have ssj vegeta's big bang attack if it would play i didn't put it in 720p yeah, obviously i can't watch 720p okay Super Vegeta no Big Bang Attack! Super Vegeta no... Look at his face! Oh my gosh! That impact frame! He was scared. Here we have the exact same transformation that we saw in the teaser trailer from 2023 in uh, Battle Hour. Same exact thing. So they kept the motif. Here's something that Makai again saying uh, posted. Um, this is a breakdown of kind of the ranked mode or whatever. Uh, Sparky Zero is a modern game with modern online modes, including a ranked option. This game is definitely not an esports game like Fighters, for example. We will still try to bring balance into the fights. For for Tani explains, for Tani explains. Instead, each online ranked battle will give you a cost limit, with each character you bring in having a certain value associated. 
that's the way we balance the game meaning that in one team you cannot choose just three or five okay okay that makes sense so that means you can't bring like gogeta vegeto and freaking super saiyan god like you can't bring all those kids you have to probably have tiers of characters like you probably only have enough to bring tiers of characters so you might have to bring krillin then a gogeta then maybe a mid-tier character which definitely brings some balance to the game because you know a lot of people would just be abusing that here we have the loading screen or the uh, title screen, menu screen, whatever, for the Sparking Zero uh, game. I believe this is the demo version. So this probably might not be the actual version uh, when we get the game. But this looks cool. Again, I like the shattering uh, glass effect that it's got going on. And just, this just looks new. It looks like a new gen Dragon Ball game, man. This looks so, it looks so fire, bro. A um, couple information. So this guy actually did a breakdown of the interview thread. Shout out to this guy. Uh, this is where we're going to end this off. He found the interview on this website right here. I'm going to link in this website uh, in the description below. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be going through this and reading a bit through it, kind of skimming through it, seeing what they have to say about the game in detail. So, are there any changes in development structure from the previous title? People who worked on the previous title are also involved in the development of this title. So, that is actually a key point right now. The fact that the same developers that were working on Tenkai 3 are the same developers working on this game is all we need to know. That's literally why the game is the way we want it because they know exactly how they want their game. They know exactly how the game was. So Spike Chunsoft is still in charge of development so you can rest assured that the soul of the series has been firmly inherited in terms of development scale. It is a large number of characters to participate in the series so please look forward to it. What is the appeal? Uh, unique to Sparking Zero series. The experience of playing as a Dragon Ball character is most important thing. In order to realize that experience, we have prepared many characters and are particularly about particular about effects. When you acclimate, when you accumulate energy and the surroundings move forward and when you charge, fully charge, rocks break, we believe that the experience of power of Super Warrior can be felt of a Super Warrior can be felt from such things and we are pursuing it. So yeah, again, they're trying to really give us the feel like we're literally playing in the enemy anime. Like we all want to pretend like we could, you know, shoot coming houses and stuff, but they're giving us the closest thing to feel like we're actually playing in the anime and living out those fights. Even though, even though it's the same fighting game, rather than fighting strictly on equal terms, like in Dragon Ball Fighter Z, it's designed to focus on Dragon Ball like action. In this sense, the strong characters in the game are strong, and the weak characters have a hard time. That's great. And I I said this on Twitter too. It's going to be a sight to see. It's going to be like a two-sided argument where it's like, where it's like, oh, you beat me, but I had Krillin and you had Vegito. So, I mean, you should have won. And then it's going to be, oh, you beat me. How how you beat, how you let him win and he had Cybermen and you had freaking Vegito. How you, how? Like, <laughs> the freaking arguments are going to be so, too, you're never, you're never going to win. Because if you don't, if you have a strong character and you lose, you suck. If you have a strong character and you win, Eh, you're supposed to win. So it's like, it's going to be crazy. The previous title, Dragon Ball Sparking Meteor, uh, had a Z in the title, but why did it disappear from this game? Th this is actually good questions, by the way. Who's ever asking this? This time, Super is also included. So this time, the Z has been removed. Makes sense. The reason for the title Zero is to make it easier to start from here, as it's the first new framework in 17 years, by the way, the Sparking Zero series, the Sparking Zero series was released overseas under the title Budokai Tenkai Ichi, but this work has been, uni but this work has a unified name, and that's what I keep trying to explain to everybody. No, this is not a reboot or like a like a restart, but it is a pivot point and it is a new edition, a new edition. So it's no longer gonna, gonna be, it's no longer gonna be Budokai Tenkai Ichi anymore it's going to be sparking zero then maybe sparking and then sparking two sparking three they're not going with the, they want to keep the universal name sparking now they want us to all reference the game as sparking so Budokai Tenkaichi era the name is over in the western culture sparking is the is the new universal term next screenshot we have um the episode battle and edit mode let you experience the original uh, stories of what if version so what if stories are confirmed we already know this so this is a little detailed breakdown of what that is how far will the episode battles branch out are there multiple endings? Rather than branching out countless times, I imagine that in some stages you can enjoy slightly different developments depending on the results of battles and your choices. While the story will basically follow the original, I think you will be able to enjoy some what-if stories. 
So they are emphasizing that the story is going to basically go on the same track as the original. We all know this. It's kind of hard to not do that with Dragon Ball because it's based off of such a good story. There's no need to divert or create your own story when the story is already great and we already want to relive those moments. Especially since you're emphasizing a game that you want us to relive those same exact stories. So this would be a game that, yes, I'm sorry, it is warranted that you do verbatim. They need to actually, this is one of the games you actually need to copy and paste the story so that we can get the feel of, it's going to be a different feeling. You can't say it's going to be the same because the other games did the story but it was not the same feeling we didn't get the same feeling as how we're going to feel with this game so they want us to feel a different feel and again adding what is stories changes that up entirely because even if we don't want to experience the story the same way we can literally take on our own path and see how we do with a different move or not a different move but a different timeline <clears throat> question in episode battles, you said you can switch on Goku's point of view and stuff. So this is the character, this is the director's cut versus POV, uh, POV uh, that you saw in the trailer where he's behind Raditz. Uh, it will only be the perspective of playable character in the episode battle. If this is Vegeta's episode battle, you can switch to Vegeta's point of view. So basically, whoever character you're playing, that is the person you can be a POV as. You cannot probably be a POV as everybody else. You can't switch to everybody else's POV. But if you're playing as Vegeta, you get Vegeta's POV. If you get uh, Ma not Majin Goku, of course, you get Goku's POV. I wonder how it would work, though. If we're if we're doing the rival battle between Goku and Vegeta, would we both get to? I don't know. I mean, they might just do it like separately because it's all their own so story. So. How dense would the story be in episode battle? Uh, it won't be that detailed, but I think you'll be able to understand the flow of the story itself. It's a cycle of what happened before the begin, before the battle being depicted, and then the battle begins. So he's giving. They're literally kind of telling us that the story is not the bread and board, butter. Like if you're coming here to experience the Dragon Ball story, don't. That I think that they're saying. Well, that don't. But they're telling you that you're gonna get a, a bare bones representation of what it is. But the fights is what you're gonna look forward to. That's why I said in my other trailer, they're trying their best to, they're trying their best to get us into the fight. Kakarot, Xenoverse have us sit through 30, 10 cutscenes before we get to actually fight. They are eliminating that. They're like, bro, listen, we just go. Y'all know the story. We just go fly y'all through the cutscenes and then get y'all into the fight. This <laughs> is like that's what they want us to do. Um, after that, we have the actual, I think this is talking about the edit mode. So this is, the, again, where we get to create our own outcomes and stuff like this. This one really sent me for a loop. Uh, players can create various stories, but how much freedom can they have? Basically, you can freely arrange lines and characters. There are about 5,000 lines prepared, and you can change the character names in text to, to other character names. So the degree of freedom is cut in, ah, so the degree of freedom and customization is quite high. Glopku was uh, breaking this down in his video yesterday. He was telling us that there was so much things in this customization mode that he couldn't even process how or what to even put because there were just so much. And he was like, basically, saying like, dude, I don't even know if I'm going to mess around with this. I might let the creators actually do this. As a creator, I'm going to be diving. I literally have two copies. So I'm going to be using one for creation and one for like battling and story and stuff like that. It's, it's going to be a great way to make content and bring content to this channel. Guys, I'm going to be. Oh, I'm going to be going crazy with the content. I already have What If Stories lined up. I have my written notes down. Everything's going to go crazy. Just wait. These coming months is going to go crazy. <laughs> are there any stage gimmicks, gimmicks prepared? Regarding uh, gimmicks such as destruction, they are basically the same as battle mode. However, you can set ring outs in some stages. So you can actually set your own ring outs in some stages. Not all, but you can set ring outs in some stages. Can you get rewards by playing edit mode? There are no particular rewards for battles created by users, but some battles in pre-prepared pre situations can lead to unlocking elements, so you can enjoy them as replay element. Okay, so some of the prepaid battles will be uh, achievable, but unfortunately, the edit mode won't really bring us any any achievements. I'm sure it might bring us some PlayStation um, trophy achievements, but uh, not no achievements in game. So that might steer a lot of people who are who are kind of motivated by progress and stuff like that. So uh, we'll see how that goes. That was edit, edit mode. Oh, wow. There's a lot. There's a lot. All right. We're almost done, guys. Almost done. Here we go. All right. Next up is we have the uh, Patara. And the, I think this is a fusions. This might be discussing fusions. Uh, Semi-automatic or automatic controls. The control scheme is what I wanted to get into because I didn't really get to talk about that much. Uh, it seems that you have different number of people, different numbers of people on your team battles. Um... But in that case, will there be any adjustments or handicaps to your stamina? There are no plans for that at the moment. In the final version, the limit the limit is 5 versus 5. You will be able to organize characters freely within the cost limit. So the adjustments will be 
uh, will be made based on the cost. By the way, even if characters have the same name, name their cost will differ depending on the era and transformation stage. That makes sense. Because, like, Super Saiyan uh, Goku mid can't be cost the same as Super Saiyan God. Will there be ranked matches or online matches? We are planning on to implement them. So, unfortunately, there might not be ranked on launch. Um, ranked or online matches. Uh, see, online battles, is, he says online battles. He said we're planning on implementing them. That's a little weird. I'm not sure if that means that online battles won't be at launch. That would be kind of weird. I, I don't think that's I don't think that's possible. It's obviously not. It's obviously not possible. But I think they mean ranked matches in particular. Uh, I understand split screen battles are only possible in the room of spirit of time. But the hyperbolic time chamber. <laughs> but the room of spirit of time uh, be uh, be selected as a stage in other mo um, modes. It can be selected as a stage in other modes. Okay. He just entered that so straightforward. Um, next up. Okay. Uh, there is a power difference between characters, but what is the maximum possible Mr. Saiyan to be Goku? It's not that he can't take damage. It's not that he can't take damage. So as long as you have the skills, you can win. So they are emphasizing, yes. While you are, you are um, playing as a low-level character, it is still possible to beat that character. So that's going to be another argument. It's going to be like, well, it doesn't matter because you should still be able to win. Uh, if you, even if I have, you should still be able to win with anyone if you're good. Da, 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 da. It's going to be so crazy. Yeah. Are the plans to adjust the balance after the rela release? If the playing environment becomes difficult, we plan to implement an update. At this stage, we do now do know we not, do not know the specific timing, but we would like to create an environment that can be playing played for a long time, including updates. So they have no further plans to. I think they're kind of done. I think what this kind of interview is saying, like, right now, guys, anything else that we have to add is not enough time. The things that we already have planned to add before launch are going to be added before then. And right now, all the extra stuff, uh, balancing updates, those stuff will come as we get the game out because they need to see how the game is like this the balancing and stuff you can't really know what needs to be balanced if you don't know what is meta like people are going to get on here and probably be like oh my gosh vegeto is overpowered and they'll see that and be like, okay vegeto needs to get toned down the usual you know games put out the games and then the community finds metas and then they have to they have to balance it out so that type of stuff is going to be like later down the line of course the characters i was able to play this time mr satan um of the characters I was able to play this time, Mr. Satan felt the controls were quite different. Is he a special position in the work? Mr. Satan is a special character because he cannot use the flying technique. I think the cost will be relatively low. Other characters who cannot fly in, in the original work, work, such as Kame Senzin, are also unable to fly. Hmm. So non-flyable characters. Let's go. They're really putting everything into this. Fusion was possible in the trial play, but are there any gimmicks such as receiving damage or being released over time as the original work? Once you transform, including fusion and other transformations, it will not be it will not be released by attack or over time. Oh, if there's a fusion, does it also have Potaro? What is the difference between with fusion? What is, the, what is the difference with fusion? Of course, there is in terms of the system, it is the same as fusion. When selecting the various battle assists as control settings, you could choose between semi-auto, semi-auto, I can't read today, semi-auto and auto. Are there any operations that can be performed in semi-auto and not in se auto? Basically, there's no difference in what you can do, but it's just that the number of operations that the player can intervene in increases. The more auto settings you add, the more fun you ha can have, even for beginners. We've made it so that you can perform Dragon Ball-like movements even with just rapid taps. So you can change it to your liking according to your skill in action games. So yes, it is a skill gap. We're going to have a skill gap. If you played the old Tekaiichi controls, you're going to be playing classic. If you played the model controls or the semi-auto, you're going to be playing all model controls. I personally do not... I don't, I honestly, if you're the type of person who likes to like crap on people who use different controls, knowing that we're in a different day and age, knowing that they didn't play the game before, knowing that they probably going to want to get in the game and have fun and just experience the game and play the game and knowing that you can still be good with those controllers. Even though I'm playing on classic, I'm not going to shit on you because you're like modern controller. I, I think that's like, I'm sorry. I'm looking at you right now. I think that is the dumbest shit in the world to be crapping on people simply because they're playing a different control scheme as you. Please get out of your own head. It is not that deep. 
that's all I have to say for that. I, I just, that's all I have to say. <laughs> all right, getting on to, into this, we're getting on to, to the last few screenshots here, last few questions and everything. When selecting various battle assists as control settings, you can choose between semi-auto and auto. Oh, yeah, we've already seen this one. Uh, blah, 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 blah. That's not the case. You can just... Uh, okay, there's a damage change between semi-auto and auto as recent fighting games. That's not the case. So you can just set it to whatever is easy to operate. By the way, the auto setting is also possible in online battles. What is the advantage of using manual mode? The advantage is that you can counter by pressing the button at the right time. You can adjust the timing as you like. For advanced players, there are also tactics such as deliberately taking a break during a combo to shift the timing of enemies counterattack. So if you want to pursue action, we recommend choosing manual. So now they are recommending now, if you want to experience Dragon Ball to its fullest extent, you're going to have to play classic controls. So there is a two-sided thing. To, I do agree that classic controls gives you the full extent of the game because you have more access to moves and access to things. Modern controls just gives you the layout, how you feel it. But again, I don't think that it revolves around skill, in my opinion. What kind of strategy, strategies have been created by the new skill stock feature? Skill stock is the blast stock from the previous game. In addition to skills and other actions from previous games, an action called super identification is now possible, which allows you to deflect your opponent's blast, such as Kamehameha. A counter action called Revenge Counter has also been added, which also which allows you to counter even when you are under attack. It is important to think about how you move around with your still sh still stock or skill stock, and conversely, when you uh, when your opponent has a lot of skill stock, how you move around anticipating a counter attack. So skill stock and blast stock, basically like your um. You're kind of like your super attacks and stuff like that and what you use for your aura, Kamehameha's, things like that, your counter moves and all that stuff. So there, there's diff two different types of stocks and two different types of meters. I will have to see how, how that actually works. The explanation is very detailed, but I have to see like how they how that actually works to the point where like like when the bars go up, like I know obviously when you have more key, you're certain attached, but like does that affect your aura? Does that affect your, affect your speed? Stuff like that. Uh, so one of your I guess it's gonna explain it right now. <laughs> so one of your tactics is to make your opponent use their skill stock. That's right. There is no way to intentionally reduce your skill stock, but you can induce it depending on how you fight, such as by continuing to attack and forcing them to use revenge counter. If your skill stock runs out, it's a chance to attack. So I recommend attacking all at once. Ah. Ah, I get it. I get it now. So, st so your skill stock is like basically like your, could be like your stamina. Like once that get once that's out, it's like you you're restricted. By the way, are there any techniques that can't be countered with counter type attacks actions? There are quite a lot of techniques that can't be countered with ultimate blast. It's a big technique that comes after you saved up all your energy. Ah, okay. Will there be any opportunities for player users to play this game before release? I can't give you any details yet, but I would like to provide as much as many opportunities as possible for you to play it. Ah, so a demo is actually not out of the question. A demo is not out of the question. So th uh, whoever this interviewer is, you are goated. That is, uh, that is so good to hear that it's not out of the question. He said, I can't give you any details yet, but we will. But I would like to provide as many opportunities as possible for you to play it. Betas. Demo. We need a beta, bro. We need a beta. We need a beta. Last screenshot, man. And we're done. Regarding the progress, regarding the progress of development, are you already in the stage of balancing? It is not yet in the final stage, but we are adjusting the balance. Finally, please give us a message. We will do our utmost to make it possible for you to enjoy the experience. Enjoy, enjoy the experience of becoming a Dragon Ball character. It will take some time until the release, but we hope you look forward to it. We plan to release more information about the characters in the future, so look, please look forward to that as well. <sighs> Guys, we, we're here, man. We're here. We're here. It's heating up. It's almost here. I know I know. it's four months away, but think about it. Think about it. It's already what? It's already what? It's already like June 14th. It's moving, man. It's going to be It's gonna be July. Then When it's August, baby. Really, when it's August. That's what we think. Hey, the excitement is there. Hopefully, we get a beta soon before or after, uh, before then, uh, leading up to release. I would say July or August, possibly PC beta. 
maybe something. I don't know. But if you guys enjoyed my breakdown of this and everything that you basically saw or everything that was basically dropped yesterday, uh, a whole boatload of content, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new. We can get on some more Dragon Ball Sparky Z content. Peace.